Good morning, everybody, and a uh, slightly chilly uh, welcome to the parish church. Um, it's chilly because, our, for those of you who aren't members here, our boiler has broken down. So uh, that's why it's a wee bit on the cold side. But it's wonderful to see you all here for our Churches Together service. And uh, for the first time in my 12 years here, we have uh, um, the leader of St. Bernardine's, Father Andy, uh, who's going to uh, preach later on in the service. Um, at the end of the service, uh, which I hope will be at around about 10.45, um, what the idea is, is we just follow the cross out and depending on how, what the exact time is will depend on how much I kind of hold people back or give you a kick up the backside to get a move on. But the idea is normally if we leave here at about 10.45, by the time everyone's assembled outside, uh, you know, there's a pause for people to get behind and then we set off and cross all the roads and things like that, we should get to the old jail at 11 a.m., which is the scheduled start time of the um, outdoor service outside the old jail which the Salvation Army is running. Um, there are no road closures, so please, even though we'll be a large mass of people, do cross the road sensibly. Um, I think Harry's ca carrying the cross, so you'll be at the front, Harry. Um, use the zebra crossing and press the button on the traffic lights to, to get over the road. But obviously, um, do be careful. Don't just assume that the traffic's going to stop for you if you're following on. And after the old jail service, uh, refreshments and hot cross buns will be served down at what we call the center in Verney Close. And what a glorious day we have for it. It's a wonderful time for the churches to come together and get to know one another better. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge, to the great amusement of the governor. Amazing. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas? Or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't you have anything to do with that innocent man? For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. <clears throat> what shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate answered. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead of an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers round him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Please stand as we sing our first hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have never borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, Fall on us, and plead with the hills, Bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. And when they came to a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Please sit.
Please stand for our next hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Please sit. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are receiving what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me 
in paradise. The stories we hear during Holy Week, and especially on this day, Good Friday, are so visceral. As we tell and retell the events of the final hours of Jesus' life on earth. We call this Friday good in that while we enter into Christ's passion and death, we know that through this ultimate act of sacrifice, humanity is offered salvation and eternal life. And for this one day of the year, we thoroughly immerse ourselves in the reality of Jesus' passion and death. Yet through all the recalling we do this day, we know that death does not have the final word. We live in a world that invites us to avoid or anesthetize ourselves to the pain and the crosses of life. It is important for us as Christians, as people of to walk the journey with Jesus through the cross. Few have been immune to betrayal, denial, and abandonment. Some people, especially the poor and disenfranchised, experience it every day. So many of our concerns this year are about the horrors we are witnessing daily through our TV screens, through our mobile devices, of the conflict in Ukraine. And of course, in the often forgotten other lands where conflict still persists. In our own country, our own society, we're conscious too of the current cost of living crisis that is affecting so many in our own society. And our own individual concerns for ourselves, perhaps for our health, for those our family and friends who may equally be struggling. In our Catholic tradition, these three days of Holy Week, Thursday, Friday, and tomorrow, are known as the Sacred Triduum. We live out throughout these hours as one day the Lord's Passion. That word, passion, comes from the Latin passio, from which we get the root of our English word, patient, or patience. And in so much of the narratives we hear and we read today, We, as we walk with Jesus, we enter into his patient, his patient self-giving, his patient acceptance of what is happening. His self-sacrifice. The question answered by the Roman governor Pontius Pilate to Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus does not answer directly. He gives no answers to his accusers, the chief priests and the elders. And later gives Pilate no answer at all, just silence. Pilate releases Barabbas for the crowd. And through his own insecurities, his own anxious that a riot will ensue amongst the crowd, he sentences Jesus to death. Has Jesus flogged? Hands Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus receives a crown of thorns, a staff, a scarlet robe. His kingship becomes an object of derision. As he makes his final journey, climbing to up Calvary, carrying his burden of wood in order to die on the cross, it is precisely here that Jesus' kingship shines forth in godly fashion. His royal throne is the wood of the cross. That is the throne of Jesus. Jesus takes it upon himself. He takes on the cross because he takes upon himself evil, filth, the sin of the world, including the sin of all of us and he cleanses it he cleanses it with his blood with the mercy and the love of God I encourage you this morning as we enter into this walk of witness to look around how many wounds are inflicted upon humanity by evil the wars the violence, the economic conflicts that hit the weakest, the greed for money that we can never take with us, and we have to leave behind. And as each one of us, I'm sure, is personally aware, our personal sins, our failures in love and respect towards God, towards our neighbor, towards the whole of creation. Jesus on the cross feels the whole weight of the evil, and with the force of God's love, he conquers it. He defeats it. With his resurrection. This is the good that Jesus does for us on the throne of the cross. Christ's cross, embraced with love, never leads to sadness, but to joy. To the joy of having been saved and of doing a little of what he did on the day of his death. The good criminal said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. On this throne, such a king that the world has never seen. The cross is where we least expect a king to be, and yet this is where we find Jesus, and the cross is where we least want to be. Yet this is how God's kingdom is established, and where discipleship gains, allowing ourselves to be crucified on the cross of self-giving. Jesus demonstrates his kingship not by saving himself, but by saving others. Jesus demonstrates his kingship not by power, but by loving reassurances that paradise awaits faithful disciples. And only by beginning here, on the cross, can our discipleship end like the good criminal, hearing Jesus say to us, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise.
I invite you to stand now. As we sing another hymn. Please be seated. As we come to a time of prayer, I want to invite you to make a response, if you'd like to. When you hear me say the words, O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers, would you respond, O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. It's always good to have a practice, so here we go. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers, O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. So let us pray. We seek your saving grace, God of Christ Jesus, for all those who on this Good Friday are lost 
among their doubts, sins, griefs, or fears. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For those who suffer gravely from the cruel abuse of their fellow human beings, and all who suffer because of the apathy and neglect of respectable people. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For some who are suffering from disease or accident, and the many who suffer because of terrorism and war. And we pray especially for the people of Ukraine at this time. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For people who bear their suffering alone and unaided, and others who, though surrounded by medical personnel and equipment, still find their pain unbearable. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For those who suffer abuse at home or at work, and the many children who suffer from the bullying or rejection of their peers. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For any who suffer a painful terminal illness, and those loved ones whose spirits are this day torn by raw grief. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. For those who in their suffering have no faith to support them, and any whose once vibrant faith seems to be ebbing away under stress. O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. And for all who in suffering still trust and praise their God, and those who while suffering themselves still give comfort to their distressed friends and loved ones, O crucified Christ, have mercy on your sisters and brothers. O God of the cross, deliver us from all evil. Loving God, we commit into your hands our lives, that in sickness or in health, in joy or in sorrow, we may carry without grumbling whatever cross you give us and always have time and love for those who are falling down under the weight of their hardship. This we ask through Christ Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. Now let us share in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to a hymn, There is a Redeemer, and I invite you to stand as we sing this.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And follow on. Thank you.